Hello again, Geeks and Gamers. Sorgito is back here again. Um, just wanted to kind of drop in. I pre just finished preparing for Gen Con. Uh, I will be going tomorrow morning, Saturday. I'll be there pretty much uh, most of the day on Saturday. I'll be coming back around 7 or 8 o'clock. Um, if you happen to see this video by then, I'll be getting to the convention center probably about 7.30 in the morning, uh, spending the first hour or two in the Pathfinder Society rooms, which are upstairs, I believe, 231 through 234 on the second floor of uh, the convention center. After that, I'm going to the Paizo booth for about an hour or so. Uh, we're looking to get my copy of Ultimate Combat signed by a few of the Paizo staff, um, plus uh, getting a chance to meet some of the Paizo staff, thanks to uh, my friend Jody Lane, uh, wife of Sean K. Reynolds. Uh, she's going to hook me up uh, getting a chance to meet some people. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get some signatures while I'm there doing that, as well as tons of pictures. Uh, but one of the things that I'm going to do, based on my last video, is I've made a bunch of dice bags to take with me. Um, and uh, I'm going to try to sell those uh, and maybe increase my uh, Gen Con fundage a bit while I'm there. But I wanted to talk a little bit more about these dice bags, because I do have some more designs. Um, from the last time, like this one here. This is what I'm calling my my tiny size. It's a triangle-based bag, as you can see here. Um, it holds, I counted up just a, mo a moment ago, there are 28 dice in here. It holds 28 dice. So basically four full sets. Uh, this goes for $15. I um, want to show a few things while I've got the camera up here, uh, kind of show you what I've done. Um, there's a couple of things that, that I noticed when I was going through this that I had to overcome. And that is, with these little tabs at the bottom of that triangle that it forms, there's a lot of stress that goes right there. So what I've done, uh, I'm trying to find one that you can see here. If you can see that right there, I did a line of stitching all the way around the outside edges, uh, including down here at the bottom of that little point, so that reinforces it. Um, another thing that I did is... Um, on the side seams, on the inside, they are double stitched at the top and the bottom, again, stress points. Um, and then when I, when I attach the bottom, I double stitch in the corners, uh, again, more stress points. So they should be very, fairly sturdy. Um, I wanted to show this part as well in my video, the little tab here. I don't know how well you can see that, this little tab here. Uh, what, it, what it is is it's a piece of gross grain ribbon that I attached um, with several layers of stitching. Um, kind of tightly on there, so I've tugged on it. It's, it's nice and sturdy. It's going to stay on there. Um, and then I put a silk cord in there, and then the cord stop that I've mentioned before, uh, which is my favorite feature of the bags. Um, they cinch up nice and tight. No holes in the top at all, um, so nothing will fall out. Um, one of my biggest problems with some bags I've seen before, uh, one of the first ones I saw that kind of inspired my design, it was a triangular based bag, kind of this size. What they did is they took the tips of the, the triangles here and they folded them over like that and ran the cord through that gap right there. Um, but what that, what happened is when the cord gathered and it gathered these tips up, you're left with a hole right there. And I don't know about you guys, but I have some very tiny dice. Uh, here's a little D20 that I have. I have some uh, small D6s. And then, of course, you know, the standard uh, D4s and everything like that could work their way into those holes and fall out. I like my dice. I don't want to lose my dice. So holes are not good. Um, so I decided that the best way to do it would be to move the cinching point further down the bag. You're going to lose some space that way, but you're not going to lose dice. So I like that that aspect. So I have the tiny size, which we just showed you there. I also have the small size that we talked about last time, um, which is the, the square base, made exactly the same fashion. We can put all 28 of those dice in here and then add some more. Sorry about the shaking. This table's not exactly sturdy. Um, there we go. It's got about 80 dice. I didn't count these just now, but I have counted them before. It does hold roughly 80 dice, so that's a good um, good size there. Again, that's the medium. It holds up pretty well. Cinches down. 
just like the others do, nice and tight, no dice falling out, no issues there. Um, and then the next size up is what I'm calling my medium. Uh, let me pull one out here. Here is the medium. It's got a pentagon shaped base on it. I don't know if you can see that there. It's got the five sides. Um, I'm made the same exact way. It will hold all 80 of these plus m more. Another handful. Two more handfuls. Three. Four. Five. Let's say. Six handfuls. So that, that'll hold about... Um, I haven't counted this, but I would have to say that this one probably holds around uh, 120 uh, roughly dice in that bag. And again, that's the medium. That one's 20. The uh, the small is 15. Tiny's 10. So 10, 15, 20. And then we move up to the large, which was also in my last video. Uh, that is the hex base bag. Uh, you've got uh, hex hexagonal base, hexagonal, however you want to say that, um, base. Again, exact same construction. They all, I'm not sure if I got a chance to show you this last time or not, but every bag that I make stands on its own. So let's show you with uh, this bag. See, it stands on its own. If you need a die, you can just pull it out and roll it. You don't need to... Uh, Dump your dice out. I hate dumping my dice out. It's probably my least favorite part of gaming. Uh, I've got to have loose dice laying out all over the table. I can't stand it. I don't like it a lot. I like this. keeps everything nice and neat. I can roll a die when I'm done, put it right back. This isn't going to easily tip over. It's very sturdy. It stands up on its own. Um, same thing with the large. You know, we dump those in there. Uh, fill that sucker up. And then we'll finish off adding some more dice to it out of these handfuls that I have here. Um, the, the larger one here, this uh, hex ba base bag, it holds about 180 dice. Uh, while still closing nicely, so that's about 180 right there. So it's pretty, pretty nice. And then lastly, my newest design is uh, I wanted to do a uh, extra large, which would be a septagon base, but uh, any of you math whizzes out there know that a septagon has uh, doesn't have a whole number angle. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it is right off hand, but it's like 41.6 degrees or something like that. All the rest of these are whole numbers, you know, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 30 degrees, etc., to make the angles for the base. The septagon. It, is a lot different. I tried uh, to make a Septagon base, but I've yet to succeed. So I've left a gap there for an extra large if I can figure it out eventually. But instead, the next size up is my Jumbo. This is a very large dice bag. Um, as you can see here, uh, it also stands on its own, just like all the rest of them, uh, without any any assistance uh, from anything. Um, a lot of people have asked me questions. Uh, do you have a piece of cardboard in the in the base? Is that what makes them stand up? No, that I don't. Uh, it's just the fabric. Um, it's quality fabric, nice, thick, heavy duty, heavy weight. Um, it, it just handles it on its own. Uh, and what it, what the jumbo bag does is I can put one whole large bag in there, which again is about 180 dice. And then I don't have many more dice than this actually. There's another handful, a second handful, and a third handful. And then I also have over here another small dice bag that can go in there. And that will cinch up tight as well. So, um, out of these designs, I think this one is probably uh, the most difficult to manage in a way, um, because it is so big. Um, I mean, again, if you're a, geog or a geometry person, you realize that with a four and a half inch sides and such a big bottom, 
Uh, you're not going to be able to fit quite as much in there as you'd probably think you would because the sides aren't quite big enough uh, to really close well. But still, that's I mean, that's my entire, entire dice collection, which I counted up. It's about 244 dice. Uh, so there's 244 dice in there plus an actual dice bag. Um, so, you know, it does it does hold decently, uh, a decent amount at least. Um, one th Another thing that I do like about my dice bags is, uh, especially like the Jumbo, it facilitates holding multiple dice bags. Um, so, for example, if I use dice for different things, which I do, I don't know if you do, or if you play different games. For example, I do play Legend of the Five Rings, uh, which I have this dice bag for that, because Legend of the Five Rings is a uh, D10 only system. It uses 10 D10s. Um, so I have nothing but D10s in this bag, and I keep them to the side. I don't mix them up with the rest of my dice, because this is for when I'm only playing L5R. So if I were to do something like this, I'd have these dice for you know, my standard gaming, my L5R dice, etc. Um, that'd be great. I um, recently played Werewolf, which is also a D10 system, and I had dice set aside for playing Werewolf. Um, so if I would have had these dice do dice bags rather done at that time, I could have had a couple of the tinies, uh, each one with different sets of dice in it. I had have one uh, with my L5R dice, one with were Werewolf dice, etc. And I could put them all in one big bag and still keep them all together. Um, which I like a lot. I like that idea and that aspect a lot. But anyway, there's my dice bags. Um, I've shown you as many features as I think I can get across in a video. Um, if you want to buy one, so right now I don't have an Etsy. I haven't had a chance to do that yet with Gen Con coming up. Um, but you can look me up on Facebook. Uh, you can either uh, email me at sergito one at gmail.com uh, message me here on YouTube or Look up on Facebook. My uh, company name is Chained Hammer Productions. I do have a Facebook page for the company. So if you're looking for dice bags uh, in any shape or form or fashion, uh, let me know. I can uh, probably make a bag. As of right now, I am not taking color uh, requests because I do have a, a large amount of fabric in there already. Um, and I've put a decent amount of money in getting the fabric. So I want to try to sell some of these before I start buying more fabric. Um, so I have I have this red, I have black. This black that you can't really see is kind of a suede black. I have maroon, which is on this here. There you go. I've got this sort of French blue with a pattern on it. I've got a darker blue. Um, what else do I have here? I've got a satiny white. I've got a satiny blue, a satiny purple. Um, trying to think of anything else. That's pretty much about it. Um, so if you want any of those colors, any of those designs, any of these patterns, any of these styles, let me know, and uh, we can make some, work something out. Until then, I'll see you next time. You guys have a